Hey, I'm Jane. I am not an expert, but I'm here to encourage you to roll up your sleeves and try something new. Because if I can figure it out, you can too. Let's do this. Hello, and welcome back to my channel. Thank you for tuning in. Today, I am taking you along for the ride as I go thrifting. Who doesn't love a good thrift flip, am I right? We are going to two of my favorite thrift stores in search of home decor that I can upcycle. Today, we will, drum roll please, be upcycling vases, one of my favorite, favorite things to do. When you go thrifting, usually they're pretty cheap and you can find some of the coolest shapes. For project number one, I'm working with these simple glass faces. Nothing crazy, but the inspo is these West Elm vases. I love the organicness of it, the combination of the white with the textured tan. So I'll be using the Rust-Oleum chalk white paint. I'll link it down below in case you're interested. Definitely make sure to do thin coats. I noticed that if I went too heavy or got too close, it would run. So the thinner, the better. Next, I took painter's tape and taped off the bottom where I wanted the brown to be. Now you could have it be angled like the inspo, or you could just do straight across, whichever you prefer. And then I also use plastic to protect the top. You could also use newspaper or anything else you have. For the bottom half, I use Rust-Oleum Multicolored Textured Spray in this tan color. I think they marketed it for outdoor furniture, but it worked really well for this. Yeah, so that happened. Yep, big fat bummer. I'm not sure if using a primer would help. I'm curious to try this again sometime and try to troubleshoot this. I'm fine. <laughs> totally fine. Yeah, so I'm fine and I'm powering on. I taped across the bottom because the tan felt a lot tougher than the white. So I just gently taped the bottom part to protect that and then just built up layers of the white to help cover up where it was pulled off. You know, honestly, I really thought of this as a fail, but they came out cute and if you put them maybe on a high shelf and squint you can't notice that they're a little rough around the edges 
but I do like the overall aesthetic of them. For project number two, I don't have an inspiration picture, but I am taking this face and the larger jug and trying to antique them, add a little bit of texture and interest. So I think that's a little bit more in my style. Not gonna lie, I was getting real excited at this point because treasure, am I right? What is it, ashes? money let's hope it's money maybe a pirate map I don't know but I'm stoked oh boy and it's a Tuesday morning receipt come on Carol seriously okay so I used a black rust-oleum spray paint and a flat finish and I'll link it down below now I have done this project with black before I have never done it with white, so I thought I would give it a go and see how it went with doing one in white. The next step, we need some mud. Now, living in North Carolina, most of my soil is sand, so I had to find a good spot with some nice, thick dirt. Also, is this not like the creepiest shovel you've ever seen? It was here when we moved in, so. I don't know. The next step, we take the mud and smear it, smear, smear, smear it all over the dried base. I would definitely wait until your spray paint is dry before you do this step. Once the mud is dry, I took a dry rag and wiped off as much of the dirt as I could. You can do as much or as little as you like. Also, remember how I said I'd done this in black but not white? Well, I hate it. <laughs> so, <laughs> in the end, painted it black as I do. I really love how these turned out. I think the dirt really softens and warms up the black of the spray paint. Uh, I love the texture and just the antiqueness of it. I think it's a great DIY. It's super easy and forgiving. It's just a fun one. And the final project is inspired by these awesome vases by an Etsy shop called The Lovely Domain, which I have linked in the description. Definitely go support them if you're more of a buyer than a doer. No shame. Definitely support small business. All 
I got this piece of leather from Amazon. I'll link the one that I got. I went to some fabric stores and tried to find vinyl or other options and it just wasn't what I was looking for, but you can definitely go that route if that's more your style. I measured the size that I needed and used a pencil to mark it out and then got a straight edge to make sure it was square and as straight as possible. And I copied the same steps for my second base. Next, I put a tick mark every half an inch along the edge where I will be punching holes for the laces. Now, I'm sure there are fancy leather working tools, but I just found a really thick nail and a hammer and made that work. These leather laces I found on Amazon and I decided to use the black one because I like the contrast but if you like more monotone you can definitely pick one that matches your leather better. Okay so here's where I went a little bit rogue. Instead of a needle, which we did not have, I found this thing from a tag, I believe, that I'm basically using as a needle. You could also use a twist tie that you fold in half, or if you have a needle with a large eyelet, you just basically need something to help the cord through because it is too flimsy. I finished it off by tying a small knot on each end and rinse and repeat on my second base. This project was so fun because First of all, I love leather, and second of all, I have never worked with it before. So this was a new challenge, so there's definitely some things I would do differently, but overall I really like it. You could also turn it around if you aren't one for the ties, if you just want more of a streamlined look. And that is all folks, thank you so much for tuning in, watching my video, like and subscribe. Ned and I are so thankful that you're here, and we can't wait to share more with you. Thanks.